You can see the tent is up on Boyden Quad for Bridgewater State's commencement, which will take place coming up this Saturday. Welcome to this Bridgewater Now update. I'm John Luck. Just like in years past, there will be two graduations on Saturday. The first takes place at 9 a.m. and the second will take place at 3 p.m. You can expect heavy traffic around the university on Broad Street, Plymouth Street, Spring Street, and other surrounding areas in town. If you are going to the commencement ceremonies, there will be overflow viewing areas. For the morning session, you can watch graduation in the Horace Mann Auditorium or the DMF Auditorium. For the afternoon session, there will be overflow viewing available in the Horace Mann Auditorium and RCC Auditorium. Both overflow viewing sessions will open 90 minutes before each commencement starts. There will also be buses available as well for shuttle service. If you have a family member or a friend graduating from the university or the regional over the next month, we have an opportunity for you to give them a shout out on our Bridgewater Review graduation special coming up over the next few weeks. So you can send your congrats to your grad to jluck at btvaccess.com with the subject line congrats to the grad and we'll put them on TV and online. The TJ Squared Robotics team is back after competing in a pair of crucial competitions over the past month. The team finished 45th out of 64 teams and went to the first Robotics World Championships in Detroit a couple of weeks ago and placed 25th at Ford Field competing with some of the top teams in the country and the world. We had some of the members from the team in studio to talk about the past few weeks of their season and the competition they took part in called Deep Space. So last year was called Destination Deep Space and so basically the field is 27 by 54 feet and then um, there's four rockets on the field and then uh, two cargo ships in the middle and so there's two different game pieces this year. There's hatches and cargo and so hatches are like flat discs and then cargos are like orange dodgeballs and basically the robots have to put the hatches on to the rockets and the cargo ship to fill the holes. That way when we put the cargo in to get more points, they don't just roll out of the holes and then at the end the robots can uh, climb on the platform if they can to get more points. Titan was our robot for the 2019 season. And actually we start building him in January because that's when we find out what the game is. What we actually do in September is we'll usually go to a fall off-season event with the previous robot and compete there against teams, usually from New England. We'll have more with the team coming up on the next episode of the Bridgewater Review. Residents in town came together to pick up their community. This is the second annual town pickup day, and this also serves as a chance to show how many nip bottles are sold and eventually thrown on the side of Bridgewater Roads. Four buckets were set up for residents to fill up with nips. There's also a local effort to try to put a five cent deposit on the small 50 milliliter liquor bottles. There was, of course, litter on the side of Bridgewater streets that residents picked up, and Noonan Waste Service took the numerous bags of trash, and the day ended with a luncheon and a performance by the chillers. And taking a look outside right now, and you can see that it is cloudy and gloomy, and I swear that trash pickup day footage was taken this weekend because we really haven't seen the sun. Jeff, are we ever going to see that big orange glow in the sky again? Well, John, as Annie once saying, the sun will come out tomorrow. It'll actually feel much more like spring here towards the end of the week, but right now it feels pretty wintry outside. Here's a live look at Sugarloaf USA. You can see some fresh powder behind me, about two to four inches of snow fell across a good chunk of central and northern New England overnight, and especially in the higher elevations. Here's where that nor'easter is right now. It's a, the good thing about this time of year is that these storms generally decay pretty quickly. It is May, it's not February, so they're not gonna last very long, but there are some weak impulses still to across New England, and one of those will later on this evening, and that could give us a few showers here overnight. You can see that in radar, as a matter of fact, at this hour, a lot of instability showers reform now across New York State, and some of these are going to make a run towards our area overnight tonight. Now, when we lose the daytime heating, some of these are going to lose a bit of their punch, so I don't expect any steady or heavier rain now, but don't be surprised to see a few showers overnight. It's a cold afternoon out there. Temperatures generally in the mid-40s right now, pretty much uniform across all of southern New England, from Boston to Brockton to Bridgewater, Plymouth, and down towards the Cape. We are all in the mid 40s at this hour. It's not only going to be a cool night, but it's going to be a breezy night, especially along the coast where we still have small craft advisories in effect and gale warnings beyond there. So tonight, that chance of showers does exist here and there. Look at that overnight low, 38 degrees. It's a chilly night out there. There's a lot of warmer air building though across the good part of the nation, especially out west and down south. And a lot of that's going to try to make a run towards our area as we get towards the weekend. But you notice as we go through the next 48 hours, these maps don't really change all that much. As a matter of fact, after a break tomorrow, we have a chance of some more showers pinwheeling down by Thursday. That's important, of course, because we have 
uh, commencement exercises going on at Bridgewater State University for our graduate commencement that'll be going on Thursday evening. There is the risk of a spot shower here and there in the area, so keep that in mind. As for tomorrow, we'll have mostly cloudy skies, but I think it's a dry day for the most part in high temperatures back around 60 degrees. Now for the rest of the week, again, we do have those showers on Thursday here and there, low 60s. Starting to warm up a bit on Friday, more in the mid-60s, and right now, so far, the weekend looks okay here with the dry conditions and temperatures flirting around 70 degrees. We'll have another update for you coming up later on this week. Thanks, Jeff. Looking at some of the meetings taking place around town over the next week, and these meetings are open to the public. The BR School District Budget Subcommittee will be meeting in the superintendent's office at the high school located at 166 Mount Prospect Street. The meeting takes place on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. The Planning Board is meeting at the Academy Building at 6.30 on Wednesday night in the Council Chambers. The Academy Building is located at 66 Central Square. The Citizens Advisory Committee is meeting on Monday night at 6.30 in Suite 201, also inside the Academy Building. And the Council will meet on Tuesday night at 7.30, and you can watch that meeting live on YouTube and Channel 22. The meeting is also available on demand online at btvaccess.com. Thank you for watching this Bridgewater Now update. I'm John Locke.